Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I am Dr. Abstract. This is our fourth Zim Basics. And so if you haven't seen the other three, you might want to check those out on YouTube. We're at zimjs.com, and if you want to go to the vids uh, ever, you can come down here and hit vids right there. I think we mentioned in the last one that we were wanting to take a look at containers. Hmm. So containers are very handy. We use them all the time. It's a class, a basic class in Zim and indeed in, in CreateJS that is an invisible holder and we can put display objects. It is a display object itself, but we can put other display objects inside it like circles and buttons and pictures or, or which we call bitmaps. Uh, so any anyway, components, and shapes, etc. can go into containers. We use them all the time. And it's handy because that allows us to animate a bunch of stuff all together, like say animate some, some um, uh, navigation or interface in, into place. Uh, let's see some examples. Oh, here, here's one right here. All of this stuff is inside of a container. It's a leaderboard, and we, we say, hey, uh, we have this leaderboard. It's all in a container. Otherwise, if we wanted to animate this in or make this disappear, we'd have to animate in each individual item. Uh, that would be annoying. So that's in a container. Here's some uh, a component right here called a slider. That is a container. So a slider extends a container. Let's uh, click here. Uh, right because that container has a bar and a button. A button itself is a container that holds a, a rectangle and a label. Well, in this case, it's very round rectangle, isn't it? Oh no, I'm getting things wrong. Uh, this little bit down the side here would be a container as well. One, one thing is, is if, if we put stuff in a container, we can easily loop through that container and make some changes. Say, hey, these two are going to have colors, these ones won't. If we put these loose on the stage with everything, we would have no way really to loop through them. We could add each one to an array. An array is a basic JavaScript construct, a class. Uh, often we use square brackets for that, the array literal. And we could put a reference to each one of these things into an array and loop through that. But that's the that's a, not necessarily an old way, but that's a non-canvas way of doing it. When we have a canvas, or indeed, actually, perhaps we could call it, it's not necessarily a back-end way of doing it, but even in HTML, on the front end, we've got a DOM, a document object model. And uh, that also has containers, like you can have a div and inside that, or any tag, and inside that tag, you can have more tags. Same thing here in the canvas. And, and, and it is the container that handles that. It's really the container that gives us the bitmap object model, I call it. Uh, the bomb, the bitmap object model. And that is what CreateJS gave us, a way to organize these things. So we don't really use uh, arrays for that. We use a container. And the other nice thing about a container, not, not just that we can loop through it, is that we can move it and scale it and rotate it and animate it all together. So... Um, Anyway, there we go. Hey, I should try and get one of these things right. Oh no, it's getting hard. Yay, look at that. You're trying to match this pattern. Have you, oh, I got it wrong. Yeah, I got it right. Whoa, oh, uh, I got it wrong. Anyway, there we go, <laughs> enough playing. Uh, let's, um, why don't we take a look at containers? I'll close this, there. Oh, you know what? Just before we go in and actually code a container together, there is a sort of a special type of container that's quite common, and that is what we call is what we call a tile. So in Zim we have a Zim tile, and here's a Zim tile. So those those display objects are tiled in rows and columns, or columns and rows. That's a fun thing to code. It's often a fun thing that beginner coders um, have a little bit of difficulty with because it's a loop within a loop. Although it's fun to demonstrate and see if you really know what loops are. So, you know, we loop through I and then we loop through J on the inside or J and then I. And each time uh, we move something over a little bit times I. 
and then the next time we move it down a little bit times j so over and down anyway it, it's a fun basic thing to do and we did that so often tiles are, are you know everywhere uh, that's that's a tile <laughs> the last last three things have been tiles this puzzle is a tile this is also a puzzle with a tile um so we did that in zim for us so rather than having you do it each time we just made a container that uh, holds those things moved over a little bit it started off simple but it did become rather in depth uh, tiles uh, for instance here we found it so handy let's show you in examples there's tiles. Here's tiles for a touchpad thing. There's tiles for an e-learning thing. Tiles again there. Uh, here is code. No, that's not code pen yet. Here is code pen here. And there's all sorts of examples of tiling happening in code pen as well. So you can see that it's quite often that we want to tile things. We even tiled this probably. So a tile doesn't have to be a grid. It can be a stack of things or a bunch of things going across as well. It's just, that just means it's got one column. Oh, actually, yeah, one column, many rows in that case. So we can tile things like interface as well, but tile is also handy for art. All right, uh, I'm trying to find the thing that says tile. Ah, here it is, responsive tiles. So we have an example down here in, in the magical. This is some older things in Zim that are in here. But uh, we did turn the tile responsive, as in that will stretch as the window stretches. But it only stretches so far. However, what HTML tables can't do is check this out. So if we squeeze, then it, as it gets bigger, watch when it gets smaller, it squeezes. So this, this stuff could still be seen. And what it's doing is it's forgetting about the columns and actually just pretending that this whole row is, is one on its own in a sense. And we can uh, choose which way to align various things at the top and the bottoms. Uh, it doesn't even have to spread. So by default, there's a tile and uh, we won't squeeze, but there, there's a, this is what the default tile looks like. We usually like these things centered as well. So uh, this won't change now. That's how we started in Zim. Or it's, and then we added these extra responsive things. If you want to start wrapping in Zim, uh, then we use a wrapper. So Zim's got a wrapper which would squeeze the stuff but then wrap it onto the next line, much like HTML does. And a combination of these things or choosing which one to use, sort of like a flexbox grid sort of in the HTML world or tables before it. But tables were too rigid, so we now have wrapper. Also, we've got the layout class, which does these flex flexible regions. But all that stuff is off in the future, huh? <laughs> anyway, just wanted to show you a tile. Uh, maybe we can see a tile when we uh, do our code today. But I suspect we're going to have our, our time cut out for us. <laughs> you have a time cut out? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, cut out for us uh, with just uh, handling containers. So let's let's go in and code woohoo so here's the code that we've been working in in the last three and i'll open that up in browser plus and there it was it was uh some stuff we were dragging around okay right now it's on the stage so this blue part is a stage which is uh, like the default container of it all and yet we can make our own containers. So let's go in and try that out. Why don't we add these things to a container? Uh, first thing I want to do is just stop that from animating so I can think. So coming down into the old code, there's the animation code. I can select it all and go control slash and in Adam that's a multi-line um, comment. So you can do the same, well not multi-line comment exactly, but how you can comment out multi-lines. You probably know what a multi-line comment is. It's uh, forward slash and then a, a star there we go so there's a multi-line comment but uh, like i said adam you can pick a, select the whole line and go control slash and it will all comment out now i save that and i refresh here and it's like ha ah, i can think all right so we're going to put these two things into a container and talk about containers and well we make the container first don't have to but usually we would 
right here. And if we're going to add those other things to the container, we'll probably want a reference to the container. So const holder, we'll call it, is equal to a new container. And we'll dot add to. What we're going to try and do is just remake exactly what we've got here. So almost like it's just this invisible container that holds these two things. We won't even know it was different than when it first started. So the easiest way to do that is make the container the exact same size as the stage. Then if we're centering this, if we centered it on the stage, it would be the same if we centered it on the container. See what I mean? So we can give the, the container dimensions, stage width, comma, stage height, like that. There they are. And if we add to, that will just by default put it at zero, zero, right up here in the corner. So we end up with this container up there in the, cor the corner. Great. Uh, it's invisible, so we won't see it unless we outline it. We could outline it now, uh, shall we? Let's just dot outline like this. And there, there it is. We, we can't. It's hard to see. It's kind of like right at the same size. So we're getting half the half the bound. That red line is is halfway off the stage, halfway on the stage. Uh, so why don't we just cheat a little bit and just move this over a touch, dot move, MOV. How about uh, 50 comma 50? Okay, so we've just moved the container 50, 50. These guys didn't move because they're not in the container. They're still outside the container. All right, so if we're remaking the exact same scene, we'll just comment these ones out for now. We've added the container. It's invisible. It's there. Now we want to add the circle to the container, which is called holder. So we can do that in the pose here. Pose 150 left bottom. Okay, well, comma, holder. There we go. So now the circle is going to be added to the holder. So I save that and I refresh. How can we tell? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, um, why don't we, remember when we drag something, it comes up on top. Let's make sure that we've got that still. I said on top, false. So let's comment that out. Oops, daisy. Uh, comment that out. So this is the code that we had done in the other example or in the other videos. The circle, we said drag on top false, just to demonstrate that we could do it. And here we've also got an on top false. So I'm going to drop these down onto multiple lines so that I can easily comment that one out. And let's back up one, one tick here, take it out of the holder again. So now, now the circle's loose again. Let's just see what it, it acts like on the stage. So these two things are just on the stage. If I pick up the circle, it's up above. The, the rectangle. If I pick up the rectangle, it's up above the circle. Okay, so that's how that is acting at the moment. But if we put the circle inside the container, that's called holder, what do you think is going to happen? There it is. We the the next parameter there is where we're going, what container to add this to. By default it is the stage. If you don't put anything there, it's just the stage. But we are going to specify we want this to be 100 pixels from the left, 50 pixels from the, the bottom, inside the holder. And so we refresh, save this. Now we pick up the circle. Hmm. It didn't come up on top of the rectangle. Interesting. Is it broken? No, it's not broken. It's just the circle is inside the holder, and the holder is underneath the rectangle. So the on top is working. The on top is going on top of anything in the same container. Ah, okay, so that's what's happening. When we pick up the circle, it, by default, the drag is coming up on top of its container. And that container is the holder right here, and the holder was added to the stage to start, and the rectangle is on top of the holder. All right, we can test this, I suppose, by just adding the rectangle also to the holder. 
So here's the center reg. If you have center like that or center reg, that centers the registration point as well. By default, it's on the stage, but we can put holder. So now we're adding the rectangle. We're center regging it inside the holder. And we refresh here. There it is. Look just like it did before. Now if I pick up the circle, aha, there it is working again because both of these objects are inside the holder. And therefore the on top is working as, as it was before. All right. Well, it's one thing to say, yeah, look, there we go. We just added it to the holder, but how could, or the container, how could we really tell? You know, how do we really know that we've added that to the container? That was, that was pretty good, the fact that they both now seem to operate together again. But an easy way is to just, uh, here, here's what it looks like, is to just move the container. Let's move the container and see if these two things move. So if we come up here, there's the holder. Add to, oh, we can move it 50-50. So we save that and watch refresh. Aha, it just moved over 50. So I'll do the outline. Why don't we, uh, we're gonna move that off the stage pretty soon. Why don't we just swap this a little bit and say from the top. So now we've got a circle that is, um, let's see, 100 pixels from the left. So 100 pixels from the left and 50 pixels from the top of the holder. That way we can see it for a little bit longer as, as we move this thing. All right, if we move it 150 and 150, this whole thing has moved even further. So each container has its own coordinate system. We can add a grid to this and see that indeed it's 100. Do you, do you want to try? I can't quite remember how to do that. It's new grid. Usually we just add the grid and it will add it to the stage there. So there's the grid. Also we want pixels. Um, so that is percent colon false. And now it will be pixels. That doesn't really that doesn't really help us too much. Although you can see that this is 100 and then 50 is here, I guess. Yeah, 150, 150. So we have taken the whole container and moved it over 150, 150. Uh, I suppose we can kind of look at it, but what I, what I want to do is actually get this grid to show up inside of there. So I think we can just say container. I'm not sure I haven't done this in a while. Container colon holder. And refresh here. Nope. Holder, <laughs> holder, call holder. That would be weird. Okay, I'll have to look it up. And docs, and then grid. So we went to Zim. We hit the docs and hit the grid. Uh, that's hit test grid. So we don't want that one. We hit go again. Here's grid. Percent cache group style. Percent height keys allowed. Toggle cache group object. Oh, okay. So what object? Uh, it's a, sort of a bad name for it. Really probably should be container. Uh, grid was one of the first things that we made way back in Zim 1. Um, so OBJ. What object do we want to put the grid in? Uh, there we go. That worked. Okay, so now the grid is inside here and we can see that this is 100, oh, or sorry, 150 from the left. Is that what we had? Uh, supposed to be positioned oh one 100 but it's actually oh that's i was looking at the y my, my apologies um look up here at the x and as we go over in the x up at the top there it says 100 and as we come down here the y the y value right here is saying 50 so indeed this is 100 over and 50 down okay so each container has its own coordinate system we can check this out. What would happen if we scaled the container, for instance? Mm, there's a good question. So we take the container and we go dot scale, <laughs> dot sack, dot sky, <laughs> can, I can do it, uh, 0.5. So here's half as big. And we refresh here. Take a look at that. It's still 100 over. I, I can hardly read it. Still 100 over. You can see 100 because it's one of these big squares. Each one's 100, and this one's half of a big square, so 50 down. Yay! We've scaled the whole container, and it's got its own coordinate system 
um, and it's still like fine. It's still the, at the right place and everything like that. Isn't that cool? Okay, so let's take off the grid, comma, off the grid, um, and see what the effects are. There's no grid, and if we take off the outline too, there's what it would look like if we just scaled that stuff to smaller. Still, the dragging works. What if it was really small? 0.1. There it is. Oh, cute. It's a little little set of stuff. So it's almost like it's a microcosm of its own. It's almost like it's got its own stage. We made everything smaller, and there it is. And that's exactly how it, it works. Uh, what about rotation? Could we do it? Why don't we bring that to a scale of 0.5 again. Dot rot for rotation. And 45 degrees, for instance. It'd probably be good to put the outline back, wouldn't you say? There it is. And all that's still dragging, still positioned right, even though it's scaled and rotated. If you tried to do just a regular CreateJS drag in this situation, it would not work. Uh, you'd have to use this thing called local to global and global to local and local to local. And that is tricky. I don't know if you've heard in gaming, one of the hardest things is matrix calculations, matrices. And that's kind of what, what all this stuff is about. We've got different coordinate systems. <laughs> it's like Einstein's theory of relativity. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, you know, quite neat. There is, um, there is a code pen about all of that as well. And we sort of treat it as this sort of scientific <laughs> explanation. It's, it's fun. So there you go, that's a container. Another nice thing about a container is that we can rotate uh, the whole container, the whole, con or, <laughs> yes, I just rotated. I <laughs> just looked at us rotating, said rotate. Is that we can animate that whole container in and out. So why don't we try that? We'll take uh, take away some of these, um, the scalings and rotation there. I won't even bother with the outline. And by the way, add to and move, they're, uh, well, let's save this and show you what it looks like. There it is. We don't need to add to and remove. We could just loc. All right. I only did the add to initially because we we were wanting to put it exactly the same place. But if we did really just want to move it to 150, 150, we would just locate that registration point. Oh, sorry, bring that back one, one more time there. <laughs> Doesn't that look big now? <laughs> We've made it to full scale. Anyway, there it is located at, at uh, 150, 150. Not that it matters. I'm just going to change that to 100 by 100. Okay, so what now? Oh, yeah, let's try animating all of this stuff in. All right, so we won't bother outlining, but we will animate it. Dot animate. Dot animate. And here we can say, I'd like to animate from, to show you what animate from looks a little bit like, because it would be easier. Uh, it's a, Imagine that these things are already at the right location. Um, if we animated it to these locations, we'd have to ask what these locations are. And then we would have to specify where we want to start. Like we, we'd have to replace it. We'd locate this at minus in the Y, and then we'd animate it to this location. And it's like it's just a bunch of playing around. Um, Whereas if it's already in place, it's easier to animate from another location. For instance, like this, from colon true. So we say, hey, yeah, please animate it from, and then we can say uh, the props that we want to animate are the Y property, <laughs> U property. <laughs> there is no U property. Uh, the Y property of minus 600 or something like that. Okay, so this is going to animate those from a y of minus 600. Let me refresh here. And in they come. Hmm, they seem to look different than they did before. That's strange. And, and the circle's sort of like right there. It's not starting from minus 600. What's going on? Circle, circle. Oh, the circle's got a drag boundary. So what's happening is we're, we're saying animate from off stage. That's what we're telling it to do. But then we actually put the circle in there, and the circle has a boundary of the stage. So it's moving. It's saying, "No, no, no! I can't! I can't put that circle off stage. I'm putting it within the boundary." 
animating it down. So uh, we'll put that on hold. I'll show you how we can deal with that. That's a very tricky, very tricky bug. Uh, it would have been hard in Zim Basics for you guys probably to, to catch that. <laughs> um, but anyway, maybe if you did it step at step, you would see that as soon as you add this, it, it seemed to break it. Anyway, well, let's continue on. So we refresh that, and in they come. There they go. Isn't that neat? So we've just animated the whole container in, and we could have dozens of things in here just animated in. Woo! Um, let me see. What if we want to animate it in from the right-hand side? Let's animate in its X position from minus 600. It takes the whole container. <laughs> if you could see me, I'm, I'm putting my hand on that whole container and putting it off the stage to the, the left here, uh, to the left, and then animating it on. So we refresh here, and then it comes. Ooh, it looks like it's not quite enough. Maybe 700. Minus 700 so that we don't see the edge of that purple. There we go. Isn't that nice? Now, if we're animating in like that, I like to use the... This is a little bit about animation, not really containers, but I like to use the E's. We had mentioned E's, but if you've never heard of it or used it before, it'll be a mystery for you. E's is the type of equation that we use when we animate in or out. <laughs> in, the la in the last, I was, uh, I was re-watching the last basics video and I said that ease gets applied at the end of an animation. Yeah, it does, but ease can also be applied at the beginning of an animation. Mind you, in this case, the beginning of the animation we can't see. So quite often, we both, we ease in and we ease out. We apply the, the sort of easing at the beginning of the animation and at the end of the animation. Um, here's what it looks like at the end. We can say, say, back. Back is a nice one. Back, out. So what this is saying is it's going to go forward like this, and then it's going to go too far, and then it comes back to where it should land, which is right here. You ready? Let's see how that works. Refresh. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? It's sort of like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> it makes it a bit more real and more fun. Hey, uh, we might want to take the time. You're not really supposed to watch animation. You're supposed to feel animation. Just like, oh, it just happened. You know, you're not supposed to go, oh, look at that animation. Especially with interface. You don't want to be sitting there going, hey, when's my interface going to come in here? Oh, yeah, here it comes. Oh. So um, time, I, I like 0.7 seconds. It's a magical number for me. Often, uh, that's a, a good animation speed. There we go. Whoosh. You can also wait, wait, pull in uh, one second, for instance. Let people just sort of get ready, maybe 0.5. I usually don't wait one second. But sometimes you might wait 0.5 and just, hey, there it is. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to bother waiting, but I will leave it 0.7. We've got back out. There's some other ones. There's like, oh, did the wrong one, bounce. And by the way, if you wanted to bounce in, uh, we wouldn't see it because in is too far to the left. But there's in out. That's how you do it. You put the in first. There's just bounce in. There's bounce in out. And here, which is what we want, is bounce out. Because that's what we're going to see. Boing, boing, boing. Except why? First of all, it's a little bit fast looking, isn't it? Boing, boing, boing. That's because we want incre <laughs> to increase the time. Since it takes time to bounce, a good bounce time might be one. And also, we might want to bounce our, our, our Y. So here we go. Boing, boing. All right, it didn't really fall far down enough, but that's the idea. So undoing this a bit to the back out again. Uh, at 0.7, that's probably fine. We'll leave it at that. That's us animating in a container. We did have a problem and you may not know what I was talking about, but basically, if we were tr trying to, oops, if we were trying to uh, drag the circle after we started the animation, what's going to happen is basically it tries to make the circle stay within those bounds. So, uh, did you catch that? As soon as it starts, let's slow that down. We can look at it in slow motion. Do, 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 do. Three point seven seconds. It threw the circle right here, and then the other things started coming in as well. Uh, 13 seconds. There's the circle, and then the other things are coming in. 
All right, that's not how it's supposed to. That's not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look if I remove the drag here. The circle's supposed to come much later, but because of the drag boundaries, it was drawing the circle. And that's you know very unusual that that kind of. It's not really an error, or a glitch. That's how it is, but uh, you would find it a bug in your application, going, "Why? Why is that happening?" So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Anyway, what we would want to do in this case is set the drag boundary after the animation's finished. So let's bring that back to the right amount of time there. And the way we would do that is we would call a function when it's done. And we usually call an arrow function like that. So we're calling this arrow function. That's very similar to calling this anonymous function in, in the olden days. Still use that just fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, there's the arrow function, or indeed you could specify a function like add drag. That's calling a named function and put this down here, function add drag. This is not Zim, this is just raw JavaScript. So then what happens is it animates and it calls the function add drag when it's done animating. Well, we're going to do the arrow function. So AF in Atom gives me an arrow function. Put that in there. Don't need that. We do need, though, this stuff from down here. So I'll cut that. And place it right in that arrow function. Except we need to put the drag on the circle. So please add the dragging to the circle once the animation is finished. Make sense? And then it won't, the boundary won't mess it all up. So we refresh there, the animation comes in, we can drag this one and we can drag that one. And, oh, hmm, okay. So this, we, we left this in the other, you know, in the other video, we left this one going right. Uh, so the registration point, that's the center of the circle is within the stage. Uh, uh, uh. Probably what we would want is instead of doing it that way. So if we set a new boundary, that's a boundary for the registration point. If we say what object to keep it in, what container to keep this in, if we say stage, for instance, then it will keep it within the stage. I wonder if boundary true works and defaults to the stage. I can't remember. Nope, gives an error. Okay. So um, you can actually, say, we'll see Zim styles in the future, but I think if you say boundary true in styles, it will just assume the stage, but not here. Okay, so stage, it is. No problem, NP. And we refresh here again, and there it is. And the boundary is now the stage. Yay, cool, huh? This one, we didn't even give a boundary. So this is the rectangle here. It just has a drag. Uh, we let it animate, but I took that away. So anyway, there that one didn't have a boundary. If it did have a boundary, we would have to add this animation as well after, oh, sorry, that um, boundary as well is here. You can actually set the drag and then set the drag boundary afterwards with a drag boundary. Uh, is that what it's called? Drag boundary method. I hardly ever do that. Let's just check. Oh, um, I think I remembered it. Drag, drag rect, drag boundary, drag boundary, I think. So go again. There's a no drag. So that's how you can turn drag off. There it is. Drag boundary, right? So you can set, set or change the drag boundary afterwards. But really, what's the point if you think about it? Uh, nobody's, we're animating this in. Nobody's going to be trying to drag that as it's animating. It's actually, we don't even really want that to happen. We, we want it to come in and then let the drag happen. So it would probably be best to just apply the drag after the animation is finished. Okay, so that's a little bit of an aside, though, all of that, just to handle that uh, little bug there. Um, we want to make sure that we've got everything that we need for containers. So are you happy? You can also animate or not, well, we could animate or we can dot alf that too, dot alp, 
point a one and turn that whole container so that we can hardly see it. There it is. Okay, so that's some fun things that we can do with containers. Basically, we can apply properties to the container, such as scale and rotation and position and loc and that, and then the whole container happens that way. How would we remove the container? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people ask, uh, how, yeah, how do we make pages? How do we go, for, how do we show different things at different times? And on the canvas, we don't often go from page to page. It's not like HTML where we got like sites that we're going from page to page on. The canvas is usually puzzles and games and apps more so where we might bring in some interface. Yeah. And we make things change of state and stuff changes and animates in and out and that, but it's less so going from page to page, but we, we certainly can. Uh, for many years, what we did is we said, put things in a container and then remove the container when you don't want to see it and add some other container that has some other stuff in it. <laughs> so that's how we do it. It was just a, a container. Uh, as of Zimcat, actually, Zimcat came along after Zim10. Zimcat came along and said, we are going to try and make everything as easy as possible. Anything that's been bothering us for a while, such as time in milliseconds, <laughs> Uh, did, did we mention time? Like that's 0.7 seconds. Now Zim, since Zimcat is in seconds and not milliseconds, we used to have to put 700 here uh, or, or what have you. <laughs> Coincidentally, 700 for the XR, but not, not the same. 700 milliseconds is the same as 0.7 seconds. Anyway, for kids, kids don't really want to be using milliseconds. It's, you know, it's not like that Zim is for kids, but even adults don't necessarily want to use milliseconds. And also um, green sock, for instance, had gone to seconds. So we just said, hey, we should go to seconds. But if you want, you can set time to milliseconds. Maybe we did talk about time in milliseconds. Anyway, you can set time to milliseconds if, if uh, you want by doing that. And then it's in milliseconds. All right, uh, coming back to it. Boop, beep, boop, beep, boo. Uh, what were we wanting to do? Oh yeah, we're wanting to remove uh, the container. So let's try it. How about in this call? We'll set that draggable, but we'll also give a timeout. Speaking of time, timeout of how about three seconds, and then we'll call this arrow function. If you've done JavaScript before, you might notice that Zim, this is a Zim timeout. First of all, we don't have to set time out. You can still do that if you want. We don't have to figure out if that's a capital O because are we using camel case or not? I don't know if we are or not. I always forget that. Anyway, a Zim timeout is like that. Zim interval is just the word interval. <laughs> Almost. Okay, in both of these cases, it's it's like this. AF arrow function. Both of these cases, it's the time first and then the function to call. That matches things like, hey, button dot on, what? Click, call this function. Interval, time, what? Five, call this function. Loop, seven, call this function. Okay, it just matches the same format. JavaScript is backwards. For some reason, they thought that that might be popular to call an interval with a default time of nothing. And it's like, no, no, if we're gonna call an interval, we'll just, we'll, we'll put in a time, don't you worry. So they should have put the time first and the function next, but they didn't, anyway, whatever. It's not that big a deal, I don't know. That's a harsh statement, they should have. Uh, they didn't. Uh, anyway, here in Zim, we have put the time first, and then we're gonna call this function after a certain amount of time. In that function, we're going to remove this container. It's called holder dot remove. Yay. Oh, dot remove from. <laughs> Darn. There we go. Um, we add to and we remove from. 3JS adds and removes. It's a little bit easier, but we're, we're working with a legacy that has uh, an add child where you take the container and you add children. You take the container and you remove children. Everything is based on the container. Well, in Zim, we do chaining. And if we made everything based on the container, we'd no longer be able to chain objects. 
as easily. Okay, so uh, for instance, you see how we have const. Uh, uh, well, we had that container. We had a dot add to. Remember the dot add to? That allows us to chain the rest of this stuff on here, animates and drags and all that kind of stuff. The other way around, by saying um, make a holder and then later say circle, oh, wait a minute, uh, which way is this going? Holder dot add child. So this still works, this is create.js, add child circle. Uh, well, we'd have to do that after we made the circle, so that's down here. It's a two-step process. We can't we can't chain that. We had to make the holder. We had to make the circle, and then we then we do is we come out of it and we add child the circle. It's the wrong way around. You, the circles, what we're wanting to work with, we you know we can't chain more stuff onto it. Blah blah blah. So anyway, that's a little. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll come to realize that eventually, why we've done it that way. But we wanted to make sure that people knew that we were adding it to, and this is in in this case is the stage is given or some other container. Okay, if you don't put anything there, it's default stage. It becomes easier to work with that kind of stuff. Like we don't say remove from stage here. Uh, we could. But even if the holder were in, like if we wanted to remove the circle from the holder, we wouldn't say circle.remove from holder. We could. That would look like this. Uh, a little bit later, we got the circle. Some time out, we might say circle.remove, or if a button is pressed or something, remove from holder. But let's just have a thought of that for a second. Why did we bother? The circle is in the holder. But the holder is the parent. It's the you know it's the container that the circle is in. It, it's all a circle. The circle is only ever in a container, or it's not. So it always knows which container it is. It's just my parent. So this just remove from just removes it from whatever the parent is. Okay, that's so you could put you could try and think about it and say oh I know it's in the holder. It really doesn't matter. It knows it's in the holder too. And so we made it default to remove from its parent. That's the only thing you would want to remove it from. Anyway, don't worry if you don't get that either. But one day you'll, you'll look back and go, oh, I get it. Yeah, that's why we never have to say what we're removing from. It's only ever in the, the, the parent. So of course it's going to remove it from the parent. Uh, all right, so great back up here though after a certain amount of time we're saying holder dot remove from the stage and that will remove this holder from from the stage except we won't see it do that <laughs> good try you ready do, do you, you probably don't remember why we won't see it do it it's kind of like well wait a minute that was three seconds why is it still there Give you a hint. You ready? I'm gonna change this. Gone. Huh. So I'm sitting here. There it is. Kind of waiting for a while. I don't see it. I don't see it be removed. And then if I change that, it, it removed. Hmm. That's a good indication that we have forgotten something important. Way down here is a stage.update. Anytime we make a change. We have to update the stage. It won't do it for us, uh, unless, of course, <laughs> if you rescale that, that will update the stage. Um, other things might update the stage. Sometimes rolling over a button, well, rolling over a button will update the stage because it's got a roll state. If you're animating, it automatically updates the stage. So sometimes we don't have to worry about updates because of animation. But this is three seconds after we've ended the animation. So this function will run when the animation ends. This function runs three seconds after <laughs> this function runs. At that time, there's no more stage.updates. They're all gone. So in here, we need a stage.update. And as you're beginning Zim and working with things like this, you'll find that, hey, why didn't something show up? 
I added it, why didn't it show up? I removed it, why didn't it go away? If that's what's on your mind, if you're going, well, there's no errors, why didn't it show up? Remember stage.update. Maybe it happens often in timeouts or intervals or even events. Sometimes if, if an event happens, you might need in that event object, you might need to update the stage because that's after, you know, it's later on. So here we go. Let's see if it works. We refresh here. Three seconds later, it's gone. And so we, uh, we can operate on this stuff if we want. There we are, operate. Oh, three seconds later, gone. Cool, huh? So that's how you would remove a container. We could bring it back. Let's make it disappear after one second and bring it back. You could put the timeout inside that timeout if you wanted to, but we'll, we'll make, make it reappear. So holder.add2, add2. Um, by the way, the, the container or any display object has an X and Y property. If you don't set that, it's going to be 0, 0. As soon as you set the X and Y property with anything, a loc, a pose, uh, a move, a uh, center, a center reg, all those things will, or even just setting the X and Y property. As soon as you do that, that object has that as an X and Y property. So even though we've removed the holder, the X and Y is still the same. So when we add two, all we need to do is add two, and it will add it to the stage by default at the current X and Y, which is its old X and Y. So here's what that looks like. Ready? Refresh. In it comes. One second later, disappears. Two seconds after that, comes back again. And we've got that stage.update. We didn't have the stage.update. Watch what happens. In it comes, disappears. One, two. Where is it? Where is it? Well, it's there. We didn't update the stage. This will update the stage. Whoop. <laughs> Just as soon as I even almost touch that, rescales it, and, and there it is. But we want to remember that in. Okay, we could animate in the alpha. Dot animate alpha. Oh, it's actually removed. So, I mean, we could add two dot alp zero. So have an alpha of zero and say animate the alpha into one. Okay, then we don't need a stage dot update. So we've added the holder. We've changed its alpha to zero and we're going to animate the alpha to one in a default time of one second, but we don't even need that. Ready, refresh, okay. disappears comes in. Okay. Here. Disappears. Comes in. Try that one more time. This time I'll move some stuff about. Oh, just barely got there. Comes in. Okay, we didn't need the stage that update because we animated in. If we don't animate in, boop. Let's leave it like this. Got the stage that update. Okay, it's needed. Pop back in. Oh my goodness. How is your mind? How is your brain? <laughs> and all we've made are a couple of these shapes <laughs> animating in and out. But that's a lot. We got a lot going on here. Uh, I think it might be nice to see some things other than shapes. Like in the next one, maybe we'll take a look at some components and talk about events. Find out how we can, say, click on something and make something disappear when we click on it. Does that sound good? We might look at the tile as well. Um, we didn't see a tile for a, a special type of container. But uh, why don't we do that? In the, <laughs> we better not do it now, right? Are you, guys, are you guys are saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do it now. Uh, so I'm glad you were here. If you are still here, why don't you join us at zimjs.com slash slack. These guys down here. Zimjs.com slash slack and zimjs.com slash discord. <laughs> For some reason, I add them. Any absolute URLs are, are going really, really dark. I have no idea why. You know, even, even way up here. There they are. Look at that. In there, really, really dark. If it's a relative URL or a virtual, there's a virtual URL. No problem. Relative URL. No problem. Nice and green. Absolute URL. <laughs> You're black. Or <laughs> dark. Dark gray. Uh, weird. But anyway, come and join us. Zimjs.com slash Slack. Zimjs.com slash Discord. We'd love to see you there. 
And uh, this has been the fourth of the, the Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. <laughs> Cheerio. Ooh, that's a new one. Usually I say ciao. Well, you got a cheerio this time. Woohoo.